28 for each pair of standard free energy change and electron stoichiometry values below, calculate a corresponding standard cell potential. And then we have two values. So we have the negative 45 kilojoules per mole and an N of one. Well, one of these values has to be the standard free energy change and the other one has to be the electron stoichiometry value. Let's start with the free energy change. Remember, free energy is more specifically Gibbs free energy, so capital G for Gibbs, and a change is always a delta value. So we're looking for a delta G standard means that we're solving for that notch value. And remember, any type of energy is coming in the form of joules. Here, they gave us specifically kilojoules, so I know that the negative 45 kilojoules per mole has to be the delta G value. Now the n of 1 has to be the electron stoichiometry value, but what does that really mean, an n of 1? Well, if we remember with PV equals nRT, an n value is the moles. But now this is more specific. These are your moles of electrons. And these are your moles of electrons that are going to be transferred from the oxidant to the reductant, the one that's losing the electrons to the one that's gaining them. Because when we're dealing with cell potentials, we're talking with redox reactions. And redox reactions have to have a reduction reaction and an oxidizing or an, you know, oxidating uh, reaction. And if we're trying to solve for a standard cell potential, cell potential is always a E cell. And since it's standard, I got to see that little notch in the upper corner. Well, what's the formula that links E cell with delta G and the number of electrons? That's this right here. If we're solving for E cell, it's just pretty easy to just memorize it as negative delta G over NF. Now the delta G, just like we said, was the negative 45 kilojoules per mole. The N was the number of moles of electrons, so that's one. The F now they didn't give us, but F is Mr. Faraday, right? Named it after, I mean, I guess he didn't really name it after himself, but the constant is named after him. Faraday's constant, and that's always 96,485. The units here are coulombs per mole. But now you might say to yourself, well, how am I going to get rid of coulombs if we're trying to cancel out units? Well, that comes from the E cell. The E cell value is always in volts. And a volts is just an easier way of saying that something is a joule per coulomb. So there's where your coulombs come from. But now, if I'm looking at the joules, I see that I have joules and I have gillijoules. Big no-no, right guys? Big no-no. Since we want to solve for E cell, and it has to be in volts, it has to be in joules. So the thing is, for this formula, I can't have kilojoules. I have to convert to joules per mole. So kilojoules to joules, that's pretty easy. All you got to do is just times by 1,000. Similarly, just take the decimal, move it over to the left. Uh, move it over to the left. Move it over to the right. Four, four, four slots. I'm working on it, guys. I'm working on it. I still don't know my left from my right. 45,000. And that's a negative value. All right, now let's plug it in. E cell equals. E cell equals negative. We got a fraction. We got one number on top, two numbers on the bottom. The top number is now negative. So we got two negatives going on over there. 45,000 divided by 1 times Faraday's constant. Maybe I'll just extend that a little bit. 96,485. Dividing by one is, you know, the same number, so you don't even have to plug that into the calculator, but if you want to, go, go, go right ahead. E cell equals a negative times a negative is a positive, but I'll just, I'll just put it in there. A negative times a negative, 4,500. Divided by one is itself, I'm going to divide again by 96,485. Press enter, and there you go. I got two sig figs coming from the 45, so 0 0.47, and the unit is volts. And there we go. Okie dokie. What'd you think? 
just as long as you get these formulas down, this type of chapter should be okay. It's mostly, it's mostly formulas with a little bit of conceptual information, but if you guys got the formulas down and know which formula to use, you guys got this chapter. And there's tons of practice on this channel. Um, if you guys are on the playlist, which I highly recommend you are, um, you could see all of the questions that we have for this topic. So you can just go for it. Practice, practice, practice. And that's how you get good at chemistry. We also have physics and math videos on the channel. So go check them out as well. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of the community. And I hope you all are having a great day. Keep learning and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.